Hello and welcome to Document. In this video, I'm going to show you how to group your line items together by um, a name or a title or whatever it is that you have in your underlying data uh, so that you can create documents with groups together, just like we see in this example. So how do we do that? Um, well, let's go to our Airtable. Here we have um, invoices that we're creating. And in this example, we have um, some line items in here. These are all linked uh, relationships, of course, to our line items. Um, and we have our line items table ID, which we need to expand these linked records. So we're not going to go into that for this particular video. There are other videos available on how to set up the linked relationships and expand your records. So we'll put some link in the description for that. Um, and then we have our line items here. And in the line items, we have two groups, group A and group B. And we want to produce our document where these are grouped together. So uh, we've created our button field here, which is our generation link method. And document will help you create this. So, so you can just copy and paste it in. And then we need our attachment field here where we're going to save back down to. So we've got our Airtable set up there. Uh, so how do we set up our template in the document to handle this? Uh, so here we have our template. Um, this is uh, this template is available in our gallery, so you could get started straight away. And we just have to add a few things. So for um, the first step at the top, we need to add a new section with a text element um, in this part here. And we need to add this text like so. So we're going to create a new variable here. We're going to call this new group. We could call it whatever we wanted to. Um, but of course, it must be unique. So uh, because it's a variable, uh, it can't clash with a name, another name. So please just ensure that you use a unique name when you do create a new variable. Then we put in some brackets and we use the dollar sign group to indicate well, the action that we want to take. So um, we want to look inside demo line items and the field name was called group. So we're all set up here. Um, this formatting is very important. So please ensure that you follow along like this. I'll put this uh, text in the description as well. So we've created our new variable now. And now um, we have to go to our section. It's getting a little busy in there. Let's go to our section, section here. And um, we're going to loop through this whole section um, using our new variable. So we called our variable new group, and we want to loop through it in this way. Then inside our section, um, we can use a text field here and use this variable uh, inside the curly brackets name. And that will bring in the name of the group. Um, and then we have a row just here. And this is where we're going to loop through the items within the group. So we again, on this row, we edit our logic, repeat loop, and we use the term items, this must be exact. And um, this is a function of the, the, the grouping operator, um, where uh, the list of items inside the group must just be called items. But we can then um, use uh, a sort function here to make sure everything's in the right order. And you can use whichever field name that you have in your Airtable. We're just going to make sure this is by item name. And we're all set up on the side here. And finally, I put in a small extra part here, another text block. Um, and we're going to sum up the total. So each group has a sub, a subtotal of that group. Um, so we can use the sum function. Um, it's just dollar sign sum. And the items is the items that we're grouping together. And the field name is total amount. That's the one we want to bring in. And then we want to format it in this way. So this is just an extra thing you can do now with grouping as well. Um, and our template should be all set. So let's go back to let's go back to our air table. So we've got everything we need, and we want to group by this column here. 
and we're just going to give our button a click. We give document a second just to render that. There we go. So now we have two groups here. We have group A and group B and our subtotal for each of the groups in here as well. So we can see that very easily here. We've created our group um, with three items on the first one and two items in the second. So as always, I hope that was helpful. Please let us know if you have any questions at all. And thanks for using Document.